A rubber band can be stretched into a number of shapes and sizes to hold something together. The rubber band was patented in England on March 17, 1845. Spongy slabs are produced from the sap of rubber trees. Natural rubber has a greater elasticity than the synthetic kind, making it a better starting point for rubber bands. A worker measures and pours processing oil into a kneader machine, and then adds powdered pigment. After that, he feeds several rubber slabs into the kneader's spiral-shaped jaws. The jaws come together to break up and blend in other ingredients. The kneading process generates heat, which softens the rubber, making it easier to form into dough. Then, a giant pin flattens the dough into wide pieces. They slice and bundle the pieces. It's easier to add chemicals in this state. Next is to roll the rubber pieces with a precise amount of sulfur and other chemicals to strengthen the rubber and make it more elastic. Then they roll the rubber very thin. A worker twists and cut the rubber into small bundles that fit into the opening of an extruding machine. It forces the warm rubber through dyes to shape it into long hollow tubes. The extruder injects air and talcum powder into the tubes to keep the walls from collapsing and sticking together while warm. They then cool down in a trough of water, and they deflate as the injected air dissipates. Next. Aluminum poles will be used as molds for the tubes during curing, giving them the correct shape and diameter. The talcum powder will act as a release agent, keeping the molds from sticking during the curing. They go into a steam oven, and the intense heat vulcanizes the rubber to boost elasticity. They rinse the rubber tubes to remove talcum powder residue. There's so much that the water turns milky white. They hang the rubber tubes to drain away some of the water. By the time they're ready to cut, they're a bit too dry. So a worker splashes water onto them. With the tubes moistened, the next operation will run more smoothly. He feeds several tubes at once to a rotating blade which carves them. This creates elastic bands that are exactly the same width. In this case, that's 1.5 millimeters, an average thickness for a rubber band. With this system, they can cut a half a million rubber bands in an hour. It doesn't take long for the inventory to pile up. There are millions of rubber bands here. A worker scoops them up and examines each one for defects. Once approved, all that's left is the packaging. The rubber bands ride a conveyor that releases them in increments into plastic bags. It has taken about three hours to produce this bag of rubber bands. On a normal day, this factory.